Let us see few things related to lumbar puncture. The lumbar puncture, the commonly we call it the spinal tap, is a test used to diagnose certain health condition and commonly it's performed in the lower back in the lumbar region. So the coming to the definition, so the lumbar puncture provides uh, here the doctor will be inserting a hollow needle into the space surrounding the spinal column that is the subarachnoid space in the lower back in order to withdraw the cerebrospinal fluid for diagnosis. So that is uh, mainly it helps to diagnose any serious infections like uh, meningitis or any other disorders in the central nervous system such as Willenbach syndrome or even multiple sclerosis or bleeding or even any cancers or uh, any chemotherapic drugs into the cerebrospinal fluid. What are the purposes of lumbar puncture? So the first one is to remove cerebrospinal fluid. Why we are removing the cerebrospinal fluid is a that is to secure specimen for diagnosis. So we can take the specimen for further diagnosis and in, it also helps to relieve the intracranial pressure and even we can introduce some drugs into the therapy and uh, introduce air or opaque liquid before taking any x-ray for further diagnosis. And the second one to determine the pressure within the cerebrospinal fluid. We can measure the pressure in the cerebrospinal fluid and even we can inject a spinal anesthesia or a chemotherapy drugs or other medications or even we can inject a dye or radioactive substances and this lumbar puncture procedure may be helpful in diagnosing many diseases and disorders like meningitis. So the meningitis, as we know that uh, the meningitis is nothing but the inflammation of the membrane covering the brain and spinal cord and uh, this occurs as a result of viral bacterial or fungal infection. And the second one is encephalitis, that is inflammation of brain and caused by virus and even certain cancer in the brain and spinal cord. And if there is any bleeding in the subarachnoid space. And the myelitis, that is inflammation of spinal cord or bone marrow, neurosyphilis, uh, that is the uh, inversion of bacteria in the central nervous system, and the Gullenberg syndrome is uh, disorder of the body's immune system that is mainly affecting the uh, nervous system. Demyelinating diseases, so that is the diseases mainly attacking the no fibers like uh, multiple sclerosis or acute demyelination, polyneuropathy. Uses of lumbar puncture. So the lumbar puncture, why we are taking it is to collect the cerebrospinal fluid for further diagnosis. And even we can measure the cerebrospinal fluid and to rule out any infections like uh, meningitis or encephalitis. And uh, even we can inject spinal anesthesia or chemotherapy drugs or even we can inject a dye for myelography or radioactive substances. Certain points we are supposed to remember that is uh, when we are doing the procedure always maintain strict aseptic technique and the, make sure that the patient should not move during the procedure and to prevent the needle from breaking inside the spinal column and uh, we should keep the patient bed in uh, flat and bed without the pillow for eight hours. What are the equipments needed? So the skin disinfection tray, a bottle of colloidum and the sterile tray with the two spinal needles with the gauge 19 and uh, hypodermic needle number 24, intramuscular needle then 5cc syringe, 1cc syringe and medicine glass. And specimen bottles to collect the specimens of cerebrospinal fluid or even we can have test tube. 
treatment sheet or operating towels, rubber gloves, and the local anesthesia, and sterile manometer, three-way stop cock, and bed screen, bed protector, and fracture bone. What is the procedure? First thing, we have to assemble the equipment and bring to bedside. The second is explain the procedure to the patient and gain the patient cooperation and uh, make sure that you are getting concerned for the procedure. And uh, we have to screen the bird, replace top sheet with the blanket and uh, make the patient to lie in on a desired position. So usually the patient will be changed to hospital gown and uh, you will uh, the producer, we will use some gown that is hospital gown will be giving and uh, mainly for a uh, few positions will be uh, uh, we will place the patient for lumbar puncture and uh, that is mainly your knees drop uh, drawn up to the chest or you can make the patient to sit and lean forward on a stable surface so because why we are selecting this position means this position flux the patient's back and widening the space between the vertebrae and making it easier for the health care provider, the doctor to insert the needle and the back is washed with the antiseptic soap or iodine and the patient the back will be draped with the sterile sheet. And you can see that the first one is recommend position that recommend position here the mattress or the soft bed will be provided and uh, so because it will be the it the surface will be more flexible uh, less flexible so and we can place the patient on this side and make the patient to come to the edge of the bed and ask the patient to assume the fatal position and the second one even we can draw the spherical spinal fluid in the sitting position you can see the second diagram the first one is lying down position and second one is sitting position here, place the patient on sitting position and put the, uh, to the chair with the back of the chair. And cover the lower back uh, and the disinfect the area about the site of puncture. And the physician will be uh, view the glove and he drape the area and assistance if it's needed. And here the local, uh, doctor will be injecting the local anesthesia in the back to numb the puncture site before the needle is inserted. Uh, so here, uh, then a thin hollow needle is inserted between the two lower vertebrae that is in the lumbar region through the spinal membrane and into the spinal cup canal. So here you can see the patient they will feel certain pressure in the back during this part of the procedure. And once the needle is in place, you can ask to change the position slightly. Then, so you can place the patient and also the cover without pillow, make patient comfortable, clean and keep equipment. And finally, we will do the uh, after procedure, what you are supposed to do, plan, uh, make the patient to take rest. The advice the patient should not participate in any strenuous activities. Uh, and the uh, patient may return to work uh, after complete rest. And uh, uh, even if the patient is not able to tolerate the pain, we can use some pain medication, pain relieving medications like acetaminophen, because this will help to reduce the headache or back pain. And documentation, record treatment performed, amount of fluid, uh, you have drained, color, character, rate of flow, drugs installed, and even if you are installed any chemotherapy drugs, so amount of drugs you have installed, and the person who has done the procedure with the a name, signature, with the date. Coming to the complications. So the complications, the patient may feel the post lumbar puncture headache and there may be a bleeding into the epidural space that is called the spinal hematoma and there may be low more back discomfort or pain that may relate to the posterior legs and even there may be a free 
the murder tumors that will occur after a year of lumbar puncture. So, and there may be a chance, this all the things is a rare thing. There may be a chance of getting brain herniation or cortical blindness. And even if there may be a chance of getting cervical spinal cord infection or transient or permanent deafness, hydrogenic infection or transient nausea or tinnitus. So what are the risk factors? So, so even the doctors are doing the procedure in a safe manner, it may occur some uh, risk to the patient. So in around 10 to 20 percent of the people develop a post lumbar spinal headache and some people may feel discomfort or pain radiating. There may be even some bleeding in the puncture site and some people may feel some brain herniation. So before winding here, this spinal fluid samples from the lumbar puncture sent to the laboratory and for analysis and uh, uh, they may be seeing the general appearance of the fluid and the protein, mainly total protein and mm -hmm. presence of certain protein videos. These all things may indicate an infection or inflammatory condition. And uh, they may assess for sugar level because low sugar level in the spinal fluid may indicate infection, tumor or another condition. And even they will analyze for any presence of microorganism because there is a presence of bacteria, virus or fungi may indicate an infection and even they will analyze for cancer cells because the presence of abnormal cells in the spinal cord such as tumor or denotes a tumor or immature mm -hmm. blood cells because it may indicate certain type of cancer. So after few days you can ask the patient to come and collect the result and uh, uh, to receive the proper treatment. Thank you.